Welcome back to Soul Back. This is the R and B podcast. Kyle here uh, with Tom. Tom, where is uh, the uh, the third member of this dynamic podcast trio? Yeah, Ed's missing this week. Uh, we did a little research. He told us he was speaking at a conference, and I looked it up. Uh, it's a church's chicken convention down in Alabama. So shout out to Ed. I know he loves his church's chicken. Wait, is this real? Uh, no. Come on, man. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Does that sound real? I mean, I wouldn't. Sort of, actually. <laughs> <laughs> what? Um, uh, but Tom, uh, I gotta admit something too to the people. I don't even know if we're allowed to be telling people this, but uh. This podcast, we actually recorded this like a couple of days ago, and then the program crashed, so we had to re-record everything again, so this is like our second time doing it, and it's kind of weird saying the same thing over and over, so uh, bear with us. Shout out to the fans who were anxiously waiting the podcast each week. Some people hit us up and asked where it was. It's going to be a day or two late this week, but it's it's on the way. Yeah, and... um. We got a reward and a special gift for everyone. Uh, we have another guest on this podcast today. Tom, we have Sammy. I love Sammy. You grew up on Sammy. That's one of your favorites. Definitely one of my favorites. We're going to get his uh, thoughts on why uh, he's not on the Millennium Tour. And uh, he caused a bit of an uproar on social media about that. But uh, we'll get into that later. But Tom, a lot of new music to go through. Have you been doing your homework? I did my homework always for the love of R&B. All right, then. So I'm going to throw some songs at you. Maybe not all because we got to save Ed some stuff just so, uh, you know, we give him some songs to review and he gives us some fried chicken. So are you ready, Tom? <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> um, PJ Morton and JoJo, they dropped a new duet, a piano song at that. You know how I feel about piano songs, but Tom, <laughs> I kind of like it. it. It was a lot of singing going on. It was real singing, too. First of all, P.J. Morton is the new R&B savior. Can we admit that? Um, well, he did win a Grammy, so I will give him a shout out yeah. for that. But go on. <laughs> uh, so who else is... He overtook Layla Hathaway and other people to win a Grammy. That's credit right there. <laughs> all right. But we love uh, the song he won the Grammy for. It was in our top 100, but back to the it song. Was, but... First of all, that yeah. was a totally unexpected collaboration. I didn't see that one coming at all, but it was really good. Two great voices. Good song. It'll probably be in our countdown this year for sure. Yeah, I agree. And it, it, it looks like JoJo this time around is going to go more towards an R&B route. I saw her in the studio with uh, B. Cox and uh, Jermaine Dupri a couple of months ago as well. So I'm looking forward to this. JoJo has this type of voice for R&B. So. And again, PJ Morton won a Grammy. Got to be proud of him. Shout out to JoJo. It's amazing what happens when the label doesn't force you to make pop music, right? You got that right. <laughs> she, she's uh, she's couple... uh she's no longer on Atlantic, right? Yeah, I think she's on. Um, where is she? I think she's on like Warner. Is that the same? Li- I, I need to oh, double still... on that. But she... oh, I thought she was independent now for some reason. No, she's still on a major. Uh, another label actually gave her her own label. Wow. Well, then so, I take that yeah. back. More pop music forthcoming. <laughs> Calm down, B. Cox won't let us down. <laughs> uh, we got a couple more records I want to go through, Tom. Uh, like I said, we're going to skip a couple just so Ed can chime in because I know he actually reviewed these albums. But uh, Music Soul Child dropped like six songs in the last three weeks. <laughs> uh, but I don't know how that happened, but uh, he has a new duet out with Mila from 702. That's a cool song. And for those that don't know, Mila is signed to his label, Soul Star Records. So she'll be having an album out later this year cool to see them working together they just did a show together i think somewhere in atlanta it's a cool song yeah music's everywhere right now it's crazy hip-hop collaborations his own songs mixtapes i don't know what's next well i'll tell you what's next uh kalani announced a new mixtape that's set to come she released a new single as well uh called butterfly but music social is also on that one how's that possible i know because she's a big uh fan of his music she stated that, I believe even in the interview we did with her many years ago, but it's, uh, yeah, he influenced people, believe it or not. If Ed was here, he'd probably dispute that. But yeah, Music Soul Child <laughs> made an impact on the future generations. 
That kind of reminds me of this article that you wrote like a week ago and you posted it on the site with no one's consent where you called music a wow. legend. I'm giving you perfect segues here. Isn't that isn't that fun? We have such good chemistry when Ed's not here. It's amazing. He just <laughs> he just muddles things up, but that's we'll keep it moving. Yeah, that, uh, if you haven't checked out this article on the site, check it out. I made a g- pretty compelling case as to why you should call Music Soul Child a legend. Uh, leave comments. Let me know what you think. But uh, after doing a lot of research, I think there's a pretty good case, especially compared to anyone else of his generation. If you're going to call anyone a legend, it should be him from that generation. So check that out. Man, you act as if we do have perfect chemistry. But let me remind you, Tom, this is our second time recording this. So uh, you kind of already expected the segues. Wow. Don't you remember, though, when we wore our Star Trek T-shirts together in Seattle? People practically thought we were brothers, man. We were the Neptunes that day. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, let's 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 focus here, Tom. I got a couple more projects or songs I want to talk about. Salam Remy dropped a new song with Nas and Amy Winehouse. We love Salam Remy. Shoutouts to him for always doing it for the culture, and he keeps digging up these great songs out of the vault. I wish that song got more um, attention than it did. It seemed like an Amy Winehouse unreleased song coming out at you know this many years since her passing, but it just kind of came and went. But Salam Remy is doing it for the culture. That's what his project is called, and he just loves to put out this music and share it and celebrate good music. So shout out to him. We're going to get him on this podcast soon, too. Absolutely. Uh, Johnny Gill dropped a new record. You love Johnny Gill. We all love Johnny Gill. I think there's that one fan on our YouTube that always comments whenever we talk about new edition. So Johnny Gill dropped a new record. What's his name? Uh, Tom, is it like Wild for Beast? Is that his name? <laughs> I don't, I, I'm not sure. You're the YouTube guy. I'm the, uh, the Facebook guy. comments guy. I, I know You're Derek right. Dunn is, uh, is freaking out right now somewhere. Yep. But uh, this is Johnny Gill song. It's pretty solid, actually. It's solid Johnny Gill. And his last album was called Game Changer. And I feel like he did change the game, cliche or not, with that last album. Because he dropped four singles. And they were all in like the top ten in Urban AC. Who even does that in this day and age? And now he's back following after the same formula. He's going to do it again. Oh, yeah, after seven, they followed. Yeah, after seven did. But yep. that's a new, um, I mean, not anyone can do that. you got to make good music. So I'm excited about this new Johnny Gill. Yeah, absolutely. shout out to Johnny Gill, legend. Uh, John Legend dropped a new song, too, but I think it's a piano song. So we'll wait till Ed's back. It was for a good cause, listened. though. It was for oh, a good okay. cause. <laughs> so he, there was a new um, initiative on YouTube when he released a song. You can donate directly from the video or something. So check that out and uh, contribute if you can. Fair enough. Uh, August Alcina, Tom, we we found him. He's been gone for a while. Uh, I think like the, the last time I heard from him, he was making comments at Def Jam and dissing them, which we love. That's like social media. <laughs> That, that was the golden era of social media when people were just going <laughs> off on their labels on Twitter. Um, yeah. But uh, August Alcina is back with a new EP. He dropped it on Valentine's Day. He's actually independent now, Tom. Forever in a Day. What is that? A cover of a Day 26 album? Well, they do share the same title. But, Tom, it's interesting because <laughs> August at one point, he had so much buzz going for him with that uh, that song with Trinidad James. And he's, it's kind of faded. I'm actually interested to see what happens now that he's independent, I know he's been going through some health issues, but man, as you and I both know, independent, whether you're a popular artist or, or an underground artist, it's not easy. Kyle, we, we got to tell the real, though. Are you ready? What's the real? I'm pretty sure I've fought you for years to keep August Alcina off the site. <laughs> this is absolutely I don't like August Al- I don't like August Alcina. I never really did. And, uh, yeah. But there we go, talking about him again. Well, let, let's hope his health gets better and he can go back to singing those great songs, Tom. <laughs> name, name those great songs. We're going to skip on to the next artist now. I uh, do remember that one about- good song that he had in our countdown one year. That's it. <laughs> That's good enough for the site. Um, <laughs> can, we get in- <laughs> can we get into some new artists here, Tom, that I want you to give your two cents on? Okay. 
Uh, we got this new artist named Summerella signed to Polo the Dawn. Uh, she's charting on Urban right now, and it's kind of like flew under the radar, but she's almost top 20. Well, I didn't even know who she was until today. Shout out to our boy Zeppelin. He filled me in. Let me know she kind of made a name for herself as an internet uh, celebrity. That's the thing these days, people. That You become famous easily that way. And now she's making music. But actually, the song is really good. So I'm not mad at the song. And uh, yeah, it's like it's quality R&B music. And Puddle of the Don can do no wrong for us. So we'll support what he puts out. She signed to his label. Yep. Uh, Nicole Buss signed to Rock Nation. Kind of sounds sounds like Jasmine Sullivan. Yeah, um, I, didn't, I didn't really know about her either. I happened to hear the song on radio, and then I did some research, saw she was on Rock Nation. She's from Netherlands, actually, believe it or not. And she got discovered by the producer Needles. You know him, right? Yep. Yeah, and uh, he discovered her in a songwriting competition. And... Um, and here she is. She's actually about thirty, I think. So she's not she's not really that young, but she's got potential. I thought that was a Jasmine Sullivan song at first, but it's a good song. Well, clever. Uh, it was a clever way to incorporate that sample. That's a hip hop classic right there. That Wu Tang song. Wu Tang, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's a great addition. Um, and then another new artist. I actually just interviewed him. So shout outs to Lucky Day. I mean, you and I have been feeling that Rosa Moore song for a minute now, but. She dropped a new EP, Two, which I love it, man. It, Tom, he has such a great vibe to him. We're going nuts here. You know I got so off. This is about this guy. I think we played his EPs back-to-back like over 10 times. I mean, damn. Yo, it's good stuff. Hold on, Tom. Isn't it true? Yo, isn't it true that his song, Last Night, you played it like nine times straight? I did, in fact. You told me to listen to it. And then, uh, man, it sounds like the Migos a little bit. In the chorus, it's weird, but it's catchy. It's it's a groove, and he's one of the only people yeah. using live instruments anymore. It's crazy. Yeah. So, shouts to Lucky Day. I actually interviewed him uh, last week. Really good guy. He's from New Orleans, so he sort of has that Frank Ocean, Luke James. I'm not even. I don't even know where I'm going with this, but he he's from New Orleans, and so are they. And so is August <laughs> Alcina. So they're all going to be. And on so, the is site PJ so is PJ Morton. So is PJ Morton exactly. So. Shoutouts to Lucky and uh, Tom. We've got some exciting news or two uh, news that uh, two two types of news that uh, people need to hear. One is a uh, is a headline that you stated saying John B and Donnell Jones have a duet coming out. Yeah, they um, announced it. They were doing a show together, and then they did an interview where they stated that, and then uh, people got, people are excited. I, when I wrote that article, that was one of the most shared and commented articles in a while on the site so people are actually really excited we're excited i mean someone did say what is this 1999 but that's come on this is 2019 we still want to hear that you know if we could go back to 1999 i think i would <laughs> <laughs> music wise or yeah music wise i kind of like having a high speed internet yeah exactly yeah, you couldn't download uh... that much music on aol no, you couldn't. Remember, remember back in the day when, if you had to use the internet, you had to like disconnect your phone. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> Those were the sad times. <laughs> um, what else do we got here? Uh, Glenn Lewis is such a. Uh, uh, I got. Such a re- well, let's yeah. talk about Glenn Lewis first, Tom. He's Canadian. Yeah, so he's coming back with Glenn. some new. No one shows this guy respect. He's one of the best voices that I grew up listening to from my generation. So. He's working on something new. It's been like four or five years. Although he did that DJ Jazzy Jeff project, but he just supplied his vocals. He stated to us in an interview it wasn't like really his project. So looking forward to something new from him. It's been five years, I think. Yeah. So what do you uh, have? I was going to bring up the fact that I'm noticing a little bit of a, a trend here with artists going to radio, urban AC artists like Johnny Gill and Brian McKnight are two examples. They both sent their single to radio before it was available for people to even listen to online. What's up with that? Yeah, you know what? That that. started started a couple of years ago, I want to say. The first song I remember that happening to was um, Avant when he dropped Special. Mm. 
that was on radio before it even came out on I don't I don't understand the 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 release strategy behind it maybe someone can help us chime in on it but I don't I don't understand it well th- tell me if this makes sense I, I, Brian McKnight's label said okay new single coming February 22nd so I'm like all right we'll wait for it and then next thing you know today on his Instagram he posts oh we're the number one most added song at radio I'm like I can't even hear the song if I wanted to so I can't get excited like what, what's going on it's so weird yeah, like I said, I don't, I can't think of why anyone would do that. You don't, you end up not getting streams. You lose out on streams. Um, who's really yeah. listening to the radio at this time? <laughs> I, I can't comprehend it right now, Tom. <laughs> Maybe we'll ask when we get one of these artists on here. We'll ask them. Yeah, I, I might have to make a couple of phone calls to uh, some big names in these streets. DJ Soulchild, <laughs> I hope you pick up. <laughs> I'm just kidding. What? Uh, <laughs> What about your boy um, that would know that uh, deals with Empire Records sometimes? He seems to be yeah, in the know on these ha- things. Jay Holiday's manager? I'm a- yeah, I might have to give Darius a call on that. Or maybe even Travis Cherry. He'll know what's up. He deals with Urban AC Oh, yeah. Time. Our boy. Shout out to Travis Cherry. Shout out to Travis indeed. But, Tom, uh, we got to get Sammy on the podcast now. And like I said, every week we try to bring in someone special, someone that's brought soul back and. He's definitely that. He started out really, really young. And Sammy, I got to tell you, your sophomore album is one of these albums that I grew up listening to because I'm around that that millennial age. So that second album, big album for me. And then you came back last year, Coming of Age, which was one of the most underrated albums of uh, of that time. I think it was just a solid project overall. But we have Sammy uh, with us on the podcast today. What's going on, Sammy? Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. How y'all doing this morning? Doing good, man. Thanks for being with us. And my pleasure. My pleasure. So, Sammy, can we talk about that sophomore album for a second that came out in 2006? Because let me tell you, the song, Another Last Chance, that's such a sad song. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Um, I was, I was, I was, I was, uh, I was fresh out of high school, um, it's so funny because I, I remember being nervous a little bit with this album as far as putting it out just because I had been so detached uh, from the industry, just being in high school and living a normal life or as normal as you could possibly live uh, under the circumstances that I was coming from. But uh, I had so much fun also getting to work with producers such as Brian Michael Cox and Dallas Austin again and Jazzy Faye and um, Adonis, who's an amazing songwriter and producer also. Uh, Dre and Vidal, just to name a few. I just remember being a sponge in the studio and learning. You know what I mean? I was really, really a student of the game at that time. Um, just being away four years, that's a long time. And at that time, so many other R&B sensations started to develop from Amarion to Mario to Chris Brown, of course, and Trey Song. So I just wanted to make sure I still had something to offer in the genre. And uh, so to speak, I felt like MJ coming back, like wearing the 45 jersey just to see if mm-hmm. I still had it. And People were so receptive, though, and that's what, you know, uh, kind of solidified my marketing, not just the industry, but letting me know that I would be around for quite some time. Because it's not easy, you know, to leave uh, for, let's just say, three or six months, let alone four years to go get your education and then come back and the people still love you. So that was just super, super uh, humbling. And um, I like the that feeling of being unsure of myself, I guess, because I'm so confident now. Like, music is something I, at this point, can say I mastered but 18-year-old Sammy was still trying to figure it out. And and taking it to 2019, you mentioned you're so confident now. We can definitely see that reading your your social media comments and just the whole presentation leading up to this album, the new one you got out called Everlasting. You got a couple new singles out. Just talk about, you know, where you're at in this point in time with with making music. Um, Yeah, I'm finally about to release my fourth studio album, uh, March 1st, my birthday, I'll turn 32, so we'll be celebrating life as well as uh, getting my fourth album, Everlasting, out to the world. I'm very excited about it. Um, The first two singles that we released thus far are very bold, they're very sensual. Uh, I still believe in the element of love. I still think that is necessary. I feel like that's what we all were put here on earth to do. And um, that's something I wanted to bring back to the radio, back to the streaming formats, back to the internet, and just back to R&B, period. Um, I think R&B is finally taking that shift back into the right place with artists uh, like her, Ella Mae, um, Daniel Caesar, Luke James, 
uh, tank is thriving, and he's been in the business for a long time, but he's actually peaking now as a 42, 43-year-old veteran in the game. So that's refreshing to let me know that people want substance, honesty, transparency, and vulnerability back in the business and back in music, and uh, Everlasting is full of that. Um, I pretty much took all the relationships that I've gone through, um, even some one-night stands and flings, because my mom told me those things will have an everlasting effect on the man I ultimately become. So that's why I called it uh, or entitled it Everlasting. And I just wanted to share, you know, with the fans and with the people. This is the the most vulnerable and honest I've ever been. And and I I realized um, letting your fans into your life like that through the gift of song, uh, it makes them connect with it. And and it's super relatable and uh, it's very honest. And um, good, bad, and ugly, everyone will hear uh, all sides and spectrums of myself. Cool. So, Sammy, like I mentioned earlier, your last album, man, that was such a solid, solid piece of work. Um, Thank you. And and you've developed so much over the years, vocally. You've gone into writing, into producing. Um, Just talk about the necessity for an R&B artist to be well-versed in their their craft. Uh, Man, I've always, like I said, uh, when I came back at 18, I was a sponge. But I always felt like you should be able to deliver your own hitch. Because there'll be a day, you know, where the the premier writers and the premier producers, you might not have access to them. So you need to be in control of your own destiny. And uh, in 2009, when I lost everything from my ex, uh, ex-business partner of mine, well, he took everything, rather, um, I didn't have a deal. I didn't have a budget. I didn't have uh, these amazing producers to, to just pull up in the studio and um, work with. I had to figure it out. So I formulated a team. Um, I always co-wrote. Uh, back then, but I had to really learn how to write top to bottom, vocal arrange myself, uh, set up a template and learn how to record myself. These are things that now in 2019, I'm glad that I went through those things because now I'm able to develop uh, and create rather an entire project with very little assistance from a creative standpoint. I don't need anybody to write it for me. Um, I know what tracks resonate with me and when to speak and I know when I need to dumb it down or when I need to elaborate a little more dig deeper for that clever lyric i like challenging myself and i like being the fall guy if the record does awesome you can blame me and if it doesn't do awesome you can blame me i don't really like to put my fate in someone else's hands and i just love being able to deliver in curse time like it's it's kind of i guess what athletes kind of get that high with three seconds on the clock and they want to take the final shot that's me when it comes down to creating music i feel like i'm more than capable uh and more than able to create classic timeless R&B. And I think that's why I've been around for so long is because I've mastered how to create music that impacts people's souls and people's spirit. It's not just trendy music that's here for a certain time. Um, I want to be here. I've been here 20 years. I want to be here 20 more if I so choose to. You know, I want to hear your opinion on something, Sammy, because, you know, we've been supporting you um, for many years now. And, um, you know, you have a couple singles out, Playlist and Time 10 with Lil Baby. And there's a little bit of a contrast in the sounds. Times 10 is a little bit more radio-friendly. Playlist is a little bit sure. still, it's still edgy, um, but it's a little more traditional. Um, you know, Times 10, you know, we're more of a traditional type of R&B site. So when you released Times 10, it wasn't really our lane. We had to, unfortunately, yeah. pass on it. It wasn't an insult. It's just like that. Right. You just look at it like a challenge that artists face nowadays, like kind of going between what sound do I fit with, what will make me commercially viable, you know, what do my fans want to hear? There's so many things about it. So what is this challenge you face when deciding which, which um, sound to go with on the record? Well, actually, so for this album, I had the most fun creating because, uh, and just to give you all some insight, this is my first time since I've been back uh, from a mainstream standpoint in 2016 that I have a radio budget. I always was really mm. just focused on the viral campaign. Right. But in this deal, I have a radio budget. So I was able to create records like Times 10 that's going crazy in the streaming world right now featuring Lil Baby, who's one of the like, hottest artists, not just in Atlanta, but in the game. So it, it was fun to go create uh, a Times 10, or I have this record on the album called Stupid, or Three Side. They still have substance, they still have harmonies, they still have um, sonically the passion that R&B has been lacking. However, it's simple enough and vibey enough to be radio. That's like purposely done. Because at the core of myself, I can create playlists 20 more times in my sleep because that's really who I am. I'm this transparent yeah. guy that loves to sing. I'm a crooner. You know, I don't need the, the auto-tune and things of that nature. So this album was fun to create because 
I think that uh, just how my deal is structured, I can grasp everybody. So I can get the radio and the DJs and the MDs and the PDs uh, as far as the, the, the radio campaign is concerned. And as far as uh, the traditional R&B lovers of the world, that's who I am to the core of myself. So it's a perfect blend. It wasn't like a challenge, nor was it like a, a, a battle with self. It's, um, I, I would call it just being business savvy, understanding that this project I can create for everybody. Uh, COA, um, back when I was doing Indigo, uh, even if you went to my mixtape days when I did Insomnia, I wasn't targeting radio. I wasn't targeting commercial success at all. I was strictly staying all the way to the R&B love of the world. Um, but on this album, I wanted to give you a taste and a gumbo, if you will, of everything and to captivate not just the people that grew up with me, but I'm 31, so there's a whole generational gap of, of kids now that don't know Sam. So playlists might not be their cup of tea, so to speak, but times 10 would be. You know what I'm saying? So it's just that... Um, that balance to get not just the generation that grew up with me but to also garner the attention and ears of the uh, millennials, so to speak, because I want everybody. I want everybody from 18 all the way to 45, you know what I mean? Because I think music is that powerful that you can speak to those different demographics without forcing it on them. And um, I had a great time creating a project that I felt was well-balanced. Yeah, that's a great point, Sammy. It is important to be versatile and to attack on different sounds especially in this climate and this social media climate where you're, I guess, allowed to do it. It's not as const- uh, as restricted as it probably once was um, in R&B a couple of years back. But um, when you release a song like you did with Little Baby and you see those negative comments on social media about how it's not traditional R&B, and, and there's so many different definitions to traditional R&B in today's, you know, in, in today's world, what do you look at as traditional R&B at this point? Um, here's, here's my, here's my problem, not, not my problem, but here's my, let's just use the word problem with the, the word traditional R&B. Um, they try to deem traditional R&B and automatically throw it to the radio side of urban AC. Uh, with, let's just say your, uh, Charlie Wilson and your Ron Isley even. If you have a record that's not at a certain, uh, BPM, or it doesn't feature the certain artist, they automatically try to say that it's old. That's what Urban AC is. That's what they, they're, they're, they're just covering up the word old. I think that the success of When We, I like to use that record again as an example, that's a traditional sex R&B record that started off on Urban AC format and then crossed over and had mainstream success and actually went number one for uh, Tank. Traditional R&B is anything that's slow, that's a ballad, that's singing about love, or that has those soul, spiritual elements in it. Um, the the, the modern-day R&B is what they would deem as trap soul or trap and B, where it's still R&B, but it's over a more uh, edgy record with the 808s and the bass going crazy. And you just have to find that balance. Me, um, my duty is to get the masses. I'm not going to get everybody. So you're going to have those comments sometimes just saying, nah, this is not traditional R&B, blah, 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 blah. But then they're also in the same sentence complain about me being underrated. It's because you have to also have that balance to where you can cross over and have mainstream success. So um, it's, it's, it's the battle that every artist, I think, faces when, especially if they're genuine R&B lovers. Uh, but again, I think we're in a good place with LMA and her and, um, uh, just a plethora of R&B sensations now that has pushed the envelope, stayed true to the core of what made R&B R&B back in the day, and now it's getting that mainstream love again. And I'm just happy to be in that space to where I never strayed away, never conformed to just chase radio or to chase the billboards. That's never been me. That never will be me. I want to stay true to the R&B lovers while simultaneously throwing in a few sprinkles of these records that I know will propel me to greater heights and, again, expand my audience. Now, Sammy, one of the things we really wanted to hear you talk about on here was the Millennium Tour. We know you made some strong comments about that. Before we hear um, your comments, let let me and Kyle just chime in real quick because we we also had our own opinion. (laughs) For starters, I mean, for starters, when we saw the flyer, we were like, well, where's Sammy? I mean, you were an artist we thought for certain. Uh, was going to be on there. It just made too much sense. Right. And then, right. in my opinion, I'm just going to go out here and say this, they should have easily removed 
Ying Yang twins or Chingy and put Sammy on there. I mean, Kyle, Kyle, who would you who would you have removed? You know what? I, I feel the same way. Ying Yang twins and and Chingy. Listen, I grew up with that music and I love it, but they really should have made this an R and B tour. Throw Sammy in there. Throw Jay Holiday in there. I can't believe they didn't add Jay Holiday either. That was that was right. quite a blow too, but. Yeah, I mean, it made perfect sense to put you guys in there. You guys all, and I always look at Instagram and social media, and everyone is asking, where is Sammy? Where is Jay Holiday? So I guess what is your, t- like, I- I'd be curious to see how the promoter even decided on the X. Yeah, I'm um, I'm, I'm lost. I was baffled by it. Uh, it. It was more just disrespectful for me. I just, for the simple fact that out of everybody that's on that tour, legit, Everybody, um, and I don't even think. And you name twins are the big homies, but they're not even of the millennium as, as far as the time goes. And, and right. to, to me, those are two wild cards that they just like picked for whatever reason, or to add, I guess, some type of hip hop flair. But from an R and B standpoint, everybody that's on that tour, I was the first child star of the millennium. Like, if it wasn't called the Millennium Tour, I wouldn't care. To be honest with you. I could give two shits about it. But because you called it that and because I was so successful in 99 to 2001, I was the first to have a number one record on the Billboard since Stevie Wonder. I'm the first to be solidified gold and then platinum. Of that lineup, I influenced the executives to go find talent like a B2K or an Amarion or a Lloyd or, you know what I mean? Like, it was the success that Sammy had with Capitol Records in Dallas Austin that shifted the industry to go find another young child star. And then there came Lil Romeo and Lil Bow Wow and, and Lil Corey and, and so forth and so forth. So um, I know my name was brought up. Um, I've done shows with these guys, and I will say this. This is just the honest truth. It, it's it's when I, when I do shows in the, the catalog that I have, these girls, or now women, rather, they sing word for word. If I have an hour and a half set, I promise you, we're engaged together the entire set. And that could be intimidating to some of those guys. I've done shows where there's been some little issues um, behind the scenes, like nothing that the fans will know and nothing that I've ever spoken about uh, out loud. But I just feel like my name came up, and for whatever reason, they opted to go another route. And the only reason that I could come up with is because when I step on that stage, whether I go first or whether I go last, whether you give me 30 minutes or 45 to an hour, I would kill shit. I leave it all on the stage night in and night out. I don't, I'm not into like controversy. I don't create drama. And I just think people understand that the resurrection, quote unquote, of my career these past three years have been so organic, so unforced. Uh, there's no like uh, reality TV campaign or it's not about who I'm dating. It's strictly about the music. It's strictly about the love and the legacy that I've been leaving in this game and R&B for going on two decades. And I just feel like... Um, uh, they, 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 they uh, I said, and I said it on the shade room, you know what I mean? And, and finally, some people came out to speak on that, but that that's the only thing I can garner up because it doesn't make sense to not have Sammy a part of the Millennium Tour because I was such a, a, a inspiration and so valuable in, in that culture during that time. So um, I wish them luck, though, you know, in the same sentence. I have a few tours that I'm going on at the end of the year and end of the summer, but because they called it the Millennium Tour, I just took it as disrespect to not even... It is one thing to even give us the opportunity to be on it or turn it down. No one reached out to my campaign at all, and that was the part that made it quite interesting to me. Yeah, for sure. And I saw Pleasure P. He uh, he sent you a video on Instagram talking about yeah. this whole thing. And, and I hope for the artists that are on that tour, and of course it's up to you if you want to you know, join them on stage for a show or two, but I would hope that they reach out to you and do that because you deserve to be on there and, and showcase your talents for that crowd. Yeah, Pleasure's my guy, and that was all in love and and, and, and and him being silly. As you can see, he didn't drop a record like he said he would, so he just wanted to chime in and get in on some of the love, so I appreciate that. And um, well, we'll see. You know, I, I just, again, it's just an interesting thing um, that initially – from the jump, whenever this idea of having a Millennium Tour came about, that no one decided to reach out to myself or my team. It's just a funny, funny thing about that. Like I said, I know those guys. Um, I've been cool with Lloyd for 20 years, Pleasure for 10. I know Bobby V. I know Mario. You know what I'm saying? We're label mates. So um, it's just an interesting thing. And and, and maybe the promoter, you know, we should start there, like you said. I don't know how they had a roundtable 
and Sammy name didn't come up. I don't see that being a realistic situation. Right. Now, Sammy, you mentioned, you know, your your sophomore album came in 2006, and that was probably a little, a couple of years before r really started to change with, like, the Frank Oceans and the Drakes of the world really changing that sound. And, of course, you went through your some, some situations in 2009, and you stepped away from the industry for a couple of years. But when you came back, did you find it challenging to make traditional R&B again? Because that was during the time when everyone was doing that dark and moody and atmospheric type of sound. And no one was really checking for R&B at that time. So what was that period like, trying to rediscover your sound? Um, I went mixtape crazy. And, like, from 2009 to uh, 2010, literally, like, swag and weed with DJ Holiday. Uh, then I did It's Just a, uh, It's Time. Then I did It's Just a Mixtape. It's Just a Mixtape uh, 2. Then that led into uh, Insomnia. I was in such a dark place in life as far as... Uh, not just, like, musically. I'm just talking about, like, personally, going through the way I went through in 2009, uh, focusing on my finances and trying to juggle my career and my personal life simultaneously. Um, I wasn't lost when people were just on the moody, uh, dark wave, so to speak. I still was doing mixtapes and staying true to my uh, R&B, as as we call it, traditional R&B sound, because I was underground. So I didn't have to, again, cater to radio. I didn't have to cater to a label. I wasn't signed to anybody. So uh, there was freedom for me in creating traditional R&B and kind of being a rebel when everyone said I should switch and go, you know, that way. For who? You know, for what? I'm not putting out albums, you know what I'm saying? I'm not, like, in the system right now. I'm just really trying to uh, have fun again with music. I didn't want to lose the passion because sometimes when you go through business uh or terrible things on the business side, it takes the passion away from your creative. I didn't want that to happen to me. And I wanted to still be able to grow because I knew one day it would be full circle and I wanted to be right in pocket. And that's where I'm at now. That's why Coming of Age was what it was. That's why the I'm Him EP was what it was. That's why 3187 uh, 3.0 is what it is. And that's why Everlasting is what it is because while everyone was still trying to chase the shift, I stayed kind of, you know what I mean, as the, the, the soul rebel, like, nah, this is the core R&B fans, and this is what I want to give to them because I didn't have to chase commercial success. I really was focused only on the Sammy lovers and the people that cared about traditional music. So I didn't get lost when the music took a shift because I wasn't, quote-unquote, clocked in, um, so to speak. I, I stayed in my own lane and, and kind of lived in my own world for some years. Makes sense. Now, Sammy, you mentioned Tank earlier. You know, of course, you wrote the amazing song, Next Breath, for him. We love that song. And I'll tell you, we have a love-hate relationship with Tank on this podcast, man. We <laughs> love Tank. We love, okay. from the beginning, we've been supporting Tank. It's kind of like tough love because we just hold yeah, him yeah, to such yeah. high expectations. And I think you might have a little bit of a different opinion on some of his newer music than we do. But let me have Kyle kind of give his his feedback, and then I'll let you chime in. But, like, Next Breath, gotcha. like, that was a moment for Tank. And we love hearing that out of Tank. Kyle, um, just fill, fill in Sammy on how kind of how it goes with Tank on this podcast. Well, um, I think we can all wholeheartedly agree that uh, Sex, Love, and Pain, the first one, that's a classic yeah. R&B yeah. album. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Everyone, everyone that I know loves that album, especially during exactly. that time in R&B, 2007, 2008. We needed an album like that, and we got it. And then over the years, Tank has continued to try to make that type of music until I guess the last couple of years, he kind of switched it up on us, tried to aim for commercial success, which he did with When We, and that was a huge record. Right. But right. it's not the tank of old, so it's tough. To, be, well, to, to Kyle, to be fair to Tank, he did say, and I'm sure Sammy, you've seen his comments that people weren't supporting mm-hmm. him when he was making traditional R&B. Mm-hmm. So yep. he decided to follow. And for, at one point, you can't blame him for that. But on the other hand, just judging the music, Kyle, like. It's not for us, really, right? right? Yeah, it's not It's not for us. But, Sammy, what are your thoughts on it? Because you take an artist that, you know, we've, we've invested and loved for at least a decade for that type of sound, and then they switch it up and do something completely different. Is it on the fans to evolve with the artist, or should the artist be evolving? I mean, of course they should, but how does that balance go, and how do you feel about, like, Tank's music it's, nowadays it, compared to, like, 10 it, years ago? It's so... 
Yeah, so I'm a I'm a tank connoisseur just like you guys, and let me say I, I agree totally. Sex, Love, and Pain was like the greatest album to me that he's created. It was so epic uh, and just so full of sex, love, and pain. It was a great R and B project, top to bottom. His music today isn't that, but the thing is, uh, I want to say this: as an artist, it's situational. It's all about what Tank wants. Um, Tank is another person that, if you read the comments, is always quote unquote his entire career. He can play, he can produce, he can he writes his own music, and everyone knows he can sing, sing, you know what I'm saying? But they deem him underrated. I think he got tired of that tag. I think he got tired of not being considered uh, one of the kings of R&B for all the work that he's put in from um, not just the artist standpoint, but he's written a lot of hit records for a lot of people. I think sometimes artists chase the respect and the love. You know what I mean? And when you chase the, when you need that love and you need that respect, you need that uh, pat on the back from the people, you then go create records like, you know, a Win We or even Dirty. You know, I, I'm not, I love I love Win We for what it was. I didn't even know it was going to do that awesome, but I liked it because to me it still was, it had some elements of Tank in it. It wasn't super just like him chasing the younger crowd. And I think that's why I still connected because it was organically him. I just hope, you know, as a Tank supporter and a little bro and a fan, I hope he doesn't get caught chasing now the success of When We. When We was so big that sometimes you go in the studio now, the second time around, I'm like, I need to create another one. Instead of just creating organically and letting it be the next whatever it's going to be. You understand what I'm saying? But it's definitely, it's not the same um, music, but again, we're supposed to evolve. And I think it was time for him personally to get that mainstream love and success that he's always wanted, and he achieved it with Win We. So I think now, to me, it would be refreshing if he went back to the elements in which we all love from the old tank. You have it. You got your trophy. You got your number one. You got your plaque. I didn't know this was his first time going platinum on his own, like his own mm. single. That's the, He's 42 years old. You know, he's been in the business mm. over a decade. So that's a great, great, great accomplishment and refreshing. And I hope now that he's gotten it uh, out of his system and he's gotten that mainstream look and that love and support from the fans that he still doesn't stray away from the original sound sonically and and. and those those are the elements that made us fall in love with him in the first place. But there's a thin line. I tell you that as an artist, there's a thin line. Like it's like, do you stay true to traditional R&B your entire career, and you're just one of the underrated R&B goats, or do at some point you switch gears or switch lanes for a little bit to again captivate the ears of other people to get that mainstream love for a second? It's a thin line, and I think it's situational. It's truly up to the artist on what it is they're they're seeking and what they're trying to get out of that situation. And Tom, that was Sammy on the podcast. That was cool. He's uh, definitely excited and, and motivated with this next chapter of his career. Uh, what are you looking forward to the most uh, from him going forward? Well, first and foremost, before I talk about that, can I just say shout out to you for calling him out for his uh, single with Little Baby? I didn't. That, that wasn't part of the script, and you just said, "Listen, you didn't post it." <laughs> listen, we've got to keep it real. We can't just. In this music industry, man, not enough people keep it real. People will just smile on your face and then behind the scenes diss you. So behind the scenes, we said we can't feature the song. It's not really a fit for our site. And in front of his face, we told him the same thing. So we're keeping it real. Yep, and he but didn't I'm, seem man, Tom, too upset. Real... He seemed okay with it. No, he, he, he knows what's up. He even told us, he even told us it, was a, it was a business move. So I'm just looking forward to new Sammy music. He's put out some quality over the last couple of years. So looking forward to that. And um, man, I forgot to mention, half of that recording or a little bit of it near the end got cut off. But uh, we did ask him who was better, Music Soul Child or Keith Sweat. What did he say, Tom? He didn't even hesitate, and he went with Music Soul Child. So Unfortunately, we'll, we don't we'll have fill, that. We, we'll, we'll we don't have that, that we'll recorded. We'll fill in so on I'll, that. <laughs> well, like I said, I don't have that recorded, so we'll take your word for it, I think. All right. right, Will do. <laughs> All right, Tom, are you can ready we, to get into the player, Can we give a shout-out? Before that, can we give a shout-out to us, oh, especially you, uh, getting us all these guests for this podcast? We're on a roll here, aren't we? Dude, we are on a roll. We actually, uh, I think we have Carl Thomas coming up too now, right? Yeah, but that's like, so we got had Drew Hill, 112. Yeah. Um, recently, we just had Sammy. 
Now we're gonna have a guest every show this year. Done deal. That's the. It takes work plan. though. It's hard. Yeah, I actually have one. I'm I'm so excited. I'm just gonna tell everyone. But I've been working no, on this one no, for a minute. No, no, don't we, tell them. We can't you're tell. You're gonna jinx it. You're gonna jinx it. All right, it. you're right. Well, let's just but say that the guy is. It's very, exciting. It is very exciting. We'll just say that the guy is very, 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 very tall, like really tall. And Wait, we'll really? That. He's an he's an extremely tall R and B singer. He's like six foot eight. Oh, that guy. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. I thought you and, meant the other guy. Well, we have lots of guys. We might even get guy on the podcast at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you meant the bald guy with glasses. Oh, I don't even know what's going on anymore, but we'll get them all. <laughs> <laughs> um, can we get into the play, please, Tom? Yes. Okay, well, I have I have a lot, but I want to wait for Ed on these, but I'll give you a couple. Um, ja Rule announced that he is set to work on uh, putting together a music festival. Uh, as you know, Ja Rule came under a lot of criticism for how his team handled the Fire Fest, which was an epic failure. Uh, would you be going to this new Ja Rule festival, Tom? Ugh. How can I put this and not sound like a hater? But if it's Ja Rule, I mean, he's not at the peak of his career anymore. And we actually like Ja Rule, you know. But, like, if he's involved with something, why would you make? Why would you think it's going to be, like, the greatest thing ever? <laughs> it was To me, it was questionable when he was the main person involved in the previous one because it's like, out of all the big names you can get at that point in time, you get Ja Rule, who many, not us, but many would consider quote-unquote, washed up. I'm just saying. You should have known something was off from the start. All right. And uh, you won't be eating those... So you're not looking forward to those ham and cheese sandwiches? I mean, that's something I would eat anyway, so that's not scary for me. All right. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I read something interesting. This happened actually a couple of weeks ago. I'm going to read this headline to you, Tom. Teen tried to steal a jet to fly to a rap concert. Hmm. Um, what how do you artist steal would you a be jet? Well, I I don't know, but how? What artist would you do that for, Tom? Would you do that if Music Soul Child performed his debut album from top to bottom? Listen, man, you're acting like you've never heard of a Stan or never met a Stan before. They do some <laughs> crazy stuff. Yeah, it's true. Um, I don't think I would go that far, but. I can see why somebody would do that. I'm actually curious to find out who the uh, artist was that uh, he uh, he attempted all these crimes to go see. Well, then again, you made me fly to New Orleans just to see Brandy. It was me, you, Dwayne, and uh, Alex <laughs> from my music. Your was it your music, my world? Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. I, I I found out uh, who the rapper was that uh, dude stole a jet to go see. Who? Uh, this rapper named Famous Dex. Do you know who that is? No idea. Me neither. So <laughs> he must be good if speaking you're uh, willing to commit crimes. Speaking of rappers, though, I heard LeBron James is producing uh, Two Chains' next album. Does that mean you're going to check it out? Yep. I'm in. <laughs> really? <laughs> yep. Um, wow. Tom, the last play of please, uh, we got to get into this. It's not even a play of please, but man, people on uh, social media, they have absolutely no chill. It's undefeated. Have you seen pictures of Avar <laughs> recently? Why are we? <sighs> yes, I have. He's in good shape. Well, let me read some of the comments. Well, let me give you some backstory on this. So the last time we saw Avon in person... Uh, well, we had interviewed him, but before that, we had seen him in New Orleans. And uh, he was, is husky the right word? Yeah, but you know how some people are just like big boned? Like he yeah. just looked like that. I never thought he was fat or anything. Oh, no, no, no. I, I didn't think so. I think he was working out, but he was just big. Um, like you know how, um, but, like you know Bobby V? Like yeah, he's not yeah. the skinniest dude, but he's like built, you know, like... So that's what I thought. Yep. Yep. 
But uh, some new pictures floated around the internet uh, last week of him doing a show, and he looked fairly, fairly skinny. Like, very skinny. Well, and the actual backstory is there was that picture floating around of him at a show, and people thought he was obese. Remember that? Yep. Yeah, I mean, we didn't so see that. No, but there's a new picture now of him looking very, very skinny. And that's when social media beca- began to go in, Tom. And, man, somebody went, uh, somebody said, uh, looks like he's only down to three minutes. Listen. That's not, that, <laughs> you that's can't messed laugh up. at that. This is you what can't I'm going to say. That this, is, this is the problem with bullying. Maybe he, he's like, he has like a thing now where he will refuse to eat because he's so hurt from all those comments about him being fat. It's called fat shaming. And who yeah. knows what or, he's going through. Or me, he might actually have a disease going on. I hope that's not the case, but, I mean, he didn't really We're not going like to speculate he in... that he has a disease. Come, what do you think, or, he has a parasite? <laughs> I don't know. But one of us on the podcast, and I'm, and it's definitely not me, but one of us on the podcast said that uh, he might be trying to win those Beyonce and Jay-Z tickets as well. Oh, my goodness. I don't know who would say a thing like, Ed, what is Ed doing? Jeez. <laughs> we're gonna throw let's Ed get him on this for that one. we're gonna get Avant on this podcast that does it and we will call your boy we'll, big j we'll get this done all right we'll figure this out <laughs> um tom i think that's it for the play of please i think we're gonna have to keep it pg this time around or keep it a little calmer because i don't want to get fired from this we got so many new guests coming in that uh, i want to be there for this absolutely it's an exciting time <laughs> with the soul back r&b podcast yeah um, so like I said, we got Carl Thomas coming up next week. I'm just going to announce that already because uh, we already have that in the works. It's confirmed. He's actually going to call in like exactly on time. And uh, we're, really, we're just speaking it into existence. But uh, Tom, what else is going on with the website? Um, not too, too much. I'm trying to think of any interviews we got. Nothing really. Um, I didn't even hear anything about that huge show they had here in New York last week. At, in Brooklyn about the lineup or how that went. So I was curious. I was going to go, but I couldn't make it. But that was, uh, I know a lot of people went. It was sold out. But um, other than that, I'm trying to think. Nothing uh, Nothing really. Check out that Music Soul Child in, in, uh, article we put out. Check out that Lucky Day interview you did. And yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, the only album I know on my radar right now is Sammy's. So we'll be keep on the lookout for anything else going on. Yeah, and oh, I forgot to mention, if you guys didn't catch it in our interview with Sammy, uh, he has a new single out, Playlist, uh, which we actually did post on the website. It's more of a traditional R&B song, so it is what it is. But uh, Tom, we're going to have to come back next time with Ed, hopefully, to talk about more R&B things. Uh, I hope everyone had a good time listening to this. This was actually way easier the second time around. This is what happens when you rehearse and you practice, Tom. It's also easier without Ed because he just tends to ramble on. I mean, I feel like we just flew through all that music, you know, and we <laughs> we covered so much ground. Am I wrong? Uh, you're not wrong, but we'll have Ed Hopefully back he next week. Well, I hope he doesn't listen no. to this or else Barry Bars will be on the next episode. Oh, Barry Bars. We love him. But <laughs> we, w- Tom, we will be back. Tom, uh, Ed will be back from the Church's Chicken Convention with a two-piece for me, and I guess you'll take the... Uh, We'll give you some fried chicken without the skin if you want. <laughs> nice. Perfect. <laughs> All right, Tom. I think that's it for this week. Uh, Kyle here with Tom, and we are out. Peace.